start here with the um, agenda. And um, yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, I suppose, um, Marius, do you wanna, you wanna take on the, um, the technical work part of it here? Sure, sure. Uh, before that, I would like to, yeah, the usual reminder, please everyone add the topics to the agenda that you want to discuss. Um, okay, so overview for the last, uh, last two weeks. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. But yeah, uh, updates on uh, the V11 uh, proposal and the V11 upgrade. The proposal, I think it's almost passed. The voting period is not over yet, but the proposal should pass without any problem. Um, tomorrow, the voting uh, period ends and the target upgrade is August 16th. This is next uh, Wednesday. Uh, I haven't looked actually at the, the latest time estimates, but I, it should be somewhere in the afternoon uh, UTC. So uh, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing major there. We do expect to be, to take longer. We want uh, actually something that uh, we'll need to follow up with, uh, with HiFi and see if they can do some benchmarking on the time it takes. Uh, there will be migration code in this one. So compared to the, I know that validators got very used to <laughs> having upgrades under five minutes and that's good, but uh, there will be some, uh, we remove the, we remove a bunch of state for the, for the, what was the name of the module? Liquidity, yeah, the liquidity uh, module. It's the gravity, it's gravity dex. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So we remove that. And uh, that we don't remove the module yet, but we remove the state. So, or we migrate the state and uh, that will take a while. So we don't know yet. We'll try to estimate and we'll notify the community, the validated community. Um, just as a quick point on that uh, last uh, line, um, Dante from Haifa came back and said, uh, the testnet upgraded with similar state uh, in about three or four minutes. So I'm expecting mainnet would do, you know, relatively similar, maybe a bit longer. Oh, that's good news. Okay. So hopefully it will not take as much as I was dreading to take. Okay. That's good. Um, yeah. Uh, now the next point is we bump PFM to 4.1.0. So thanks to the Strange Love team for cutting the release. Uh, it fixes a bug that uh, some uh, users reported. So to, for example, that issue there. So now we also move the repository, the PFM is, uh, the PFM is packet for middleware for everybody to know. Uh, we get it from a different repo now, of course, also maintained by Strangelove. So nothing special there, but yeah, it will uh, go in the Gaia V12 together with LSM. Uh, Nothing, nothing, I think that has to be done there. Then uh, the work on LSM, so liquid staking module is work in progress. We, I think, and, uh, I think we are, uh, we are almost there. So the plan is to get, uh, to get main guy updated this week. And so you can see exactly the progress in the epic that is uh, pointed there is uh, the link uh, in the in the document. So we want to get main upgraded so that we can pass it to HiFat to test it in the local testnet. We we have already end-to-end -end tests in Gaia. We already have it integrated so the what the branch is not merged yet in the SDK. But once that is done, we'll just put all together, we'll, we'll need to cut another interchain security version because there some changes were needed there. And then all interchain security and this version of LSM or of SDK with LSM will all be integrated into Gaia. We cut a new RC of Gaia once we get a green go from, uh, from Haifa and hopefully we can update the public testnet next Wednesday. So that's the target at the moment if nothing weird comes up. Yeah, I was thinking, 
on the on the on the Gaia, not not to interrupt you if there's other things to say then. But on the Gaia stuff, I was wondering. Uh, sorry, the Gaia, the LSM stuff. I was wondering, um, maybe you or Marius or maybe Riley from Stride could give us kind of a, a rundown on where the review process is, um, what you know, what still um, needs to be done, or or any anything yeah. that still needs to be closed out or questions answered. So uh, I don't know. Is Riley on the call? If Riley is on the call, he can also. Or... Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So at least from our point of view, from our perspective, what still needs to be done is the migration there is a pr with the migration code that goes in the same pr it goes in on the same branch so it go, goes on the SDK side once that is merged so matia is currently working on it once that is merged we can get uh, we can approve actually the main pr with the entire branch and uh, i think we we already got an approval from Buzz from the SDK team. Uh, we'll get some approvals from our team, probably me and Matia, and then maybe if Aiden can approve it also, I assume that will not be a problem. So to have an approval from every team that is involved in this, and uh, then we get it in. That's uh, we have a branch of uh, of SDK that we can actually bring into our interchange security and bring into Gaia. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll have a approval from Aiden, I think, tomorrow. OK, so, so again, hopefully by the end of the week, we can uh, we can have it all packed into main Gaia so that we we can test it on, uh, on a local testnet. Awesome. Are there any risks you foresee um, ahead of the Haifa testnet? I don't think so, but it's hard to tell. There are a lot of, so I don't see anything major, but there are a lot of changes. So, and we already have a bunch of things tested already in the end-to-end -end test, right? Because yeah. Uh, we already did basically this preliminary test using the not using a branch but using that commit hash and yeah. the, the tests are passing so i don't foresee any problems but you know <laughs> things happen <laughs> yeah and dante from hypo has been running the user flows already on a local version so um would expect those to work, um, pending any differences between the local and the public testnet. All right, so that uh, that's good. Yeah. Any other questions on LSM or other comments? Um, Sam, are we, I think you've been working a little bit closer on the upgrade handler. Are we blocked on any reviews? I think we're good. Um, we just, I think we got the check mark yesterday, or, or at least we've gotten comments um, and all the comments have been addressed. So I think we just got to merge that in and then try and test it locally as soon as we can. Cool. Can also see. Yeah, if he feels like he, we need another review, but I think his review is pretty good. So we, we should be fine with just that. Let's bring some Sounds liquidity good. in the hub. Yeah, let's do that. Um, okay, so that's LSM. That's Gaia V12. So it should uh, it, it should go quite fast from now on. But let's see. Uh, then the next thing will be Gaia with SDK 047. So some news on that front. Uh, so again, the, the blocker there is not us upgrading Gaia to V12. At the moment, we are not pushing there because there are other, like reviewing LSM and doing other work, controlling and all other things that we are doing. Uh, the, the upgrade is almost done anyway. The, the blocker is, uh, or the dependency, we need an audit. We need to get more uh, confidence in the difference between 0.45, or at least the version that Gaia is uh, running on, and 047, the last uh, 047, so I think it's 47.4. 4. 
So uh, we are in discussions with Op Security. Uh, we have quite final discussions to start an audit, a six week audit, end of August. So uh, we went with Op Security because the, we had a good experience with them uh, with Interchain Security. So they were funded by the community, by the community poll to, to, to audit interchange security. That was a success, I think. And we decided to go, they have experience with SDK and we decided to go with, uh, with them. Uh, so yeah, six weeks, uh, six weeks audit. The thing is, of course, they cannot uh, audit the entire diff because that's way too big. So what we need to, by the end of August, we have to come up with a list of priorities. So we are working with the SDK team to figure out what will be more important to look at and what can be covered in six weeks. So the thing is, we shouldn't update, we shouldn't put SDK 047 on the hub before this audit report gets out. Right? So because if they find something, which shouldn't be there on the hub, but we could make a lot of work before that. So we in parallel can upgrade the testnet or check local testnet. So upgrade Gaia main, the public testnet. We can even put a proposal, right? Not ideal to, to, re to revert the proposal, but better than to put something on the hub with bugs on it. Um, hopefully they will not find anything or nothing major, and that will be, or I don't know if people want them to find something or not, we'll see. <laughs> Any comments on this? No. Okay, so and a few more updates on uh, what we are working on, more uh, like, not at the big like Gaia releases or something like this. We added the comment mock on uh, integrated it with the interchange security. So this we are really excited about that. Uh, makes uh, makes our testing much faster and also deterministic. Uh, makes it much easier to test different uh, different scenarios that were not possible before, like unbonding period, comp unbonding completion and stuff like this. So that's working. Um, then uh, we have a first iteration in review for cryptographic evocation. It's uh... oh, can, can I just say something about, about comment mock? I, I don't know if people, uh, you know, people here probably most of you have uh, a work on you know on uh, on Cosmos SDK projects um, and comment mock. If you have integration tests that run like a real network, um, comment mock can literally make those like twenty times faster. Um, make them run 20 times faster. So it's like really uh, pretty exciting. Um, and I think Marius, we're working with uh, Starship, right? To uh, help them get that into, into Starship. So yes, things so, can be tested faster there. So uh, yeah, we are collaborating with them and uh, they want to put Comet Mock into their infrastructure to integrate it nicely. So as the name suggests, it's basically a mock of Comet, right? Instead of actually using Comet BFT, which does the actual consensus. It's uh, it basically Comet BFT is a client of I, I, ABCI client, right? The application, the SDK is the server. So you can put whatever you want there. You don't, doesn't even need to be Comet. That's the idea of ABCI, it's just an interface. And the Comet mock is actually just the mock of Comet. So it's much faster, you don't have to, you can jump 1,000 blocks by just saying to it, jump 1,000 blocks and it will just update the state accordingly or jump in time. Just say, okay, the next, the, the jump 1,000 blocks and the next time, the like timestamp of in those blocks will be one year from now. And so you can trigger different type of events that will be much harder to do in, uh, in an end-to-end -end test, like to, in Docker containers or any other type of setup. By when using yeah. actual using actual uh, comment BFT. Yeah, so some I'm I'm very excited about because I've just you know worked on you know Cosmos projects throughout the years and we always have some test suite that takes 20 minutes to run. Um, 
And, you know, the alternative is to do kind of tests that are more like inside the code. And those are great too, of course, and have their place, but um, you can't really test the entire application that way. Um, but with this, you can test the entire application and have it run very fast. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, then cryptographic evocation. We have a first iteration in review uh, with an ADR and everything. Uh, we'll build on top of that. It at the moment is uh, dealing just with light client, uh, with equivocation light client attacks. There are also lunatic and other type of light client attacks that we'll have to figure out how to deal with, but they are not the most pressing. Um, but yeah, it's good to kind of go uh, to move forward and get the first thing out there. Uh, also in review, there is the consumer side of the throttling, the throttling refactoring, the V2. And uh, the, we have something that Jehan added here and I don't have the entire context. So maybe Jehan, you jump into this, the neutron hull bug fix. Uh, yeah, so this is um, something that has been, um, you know, has, has been an issue for a while on Neutron. Uh, Neutron will halt um, for, I think it's about 15 minutes um, every, every few days, I believe. Um, and uh, that's been, you know, it's been something that's been going on since launch, obviously not good. Um, and so uh, one of the main theories of what was happening was there is an inefficiency in the way that the Cosmos SDK currently stores downtime uh, records to know who to slash. And that usually it hasn't been a problem on Cosmos chains because Cosmos chains usually have very few validators down um, because either they'll be running or they'll kind of leave the validator set. But with, with interchain security, we have the soft opt out and it lets validators be down on consumer chains, but still be in the validator set. And, you know, theoretically that's totally okay with how consensus works. It's only five, it's only 5%. So it has like almost no effect on consensus, but um, it has, ended up, uh, yeah, as far as we can tell, it's ended up sort of bloating out the, uh, kind of taking a lot of, you know, taking a lot of memory to process that stuff um, and possibly also bloating out the, the store. Um, and so uh, there was a fix. So luckily the SDK team um, has already fixed this and replaced uh, and storing downtime slashing in a much more um, efficient way. But that has been in, it's just been in Cosmos SDK main, maybe it'll be at 50. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what, when they plan to release it, but uh, the Neutron team has been able to backport that fix to SDK 47. So uh, that is currently, I think, going into testing. Um, I, I don't know exactly. I don't know if it's happening right now or if it's going to be happening soon. But um, once that happens, then Neutron will be able to get that out and um, they won't, you know, they won't halt <laughs> every few days. Uh, and we'll probably also want to try it on Stride too uh, and future consumer chains. Um, I'm not sure. It seems like the problem is not happening on Stride. We're not really sure why it's not happening on Stride, but um, it's probably just good to get in there anyway because it's just you know more efficient. Um, so yeah, then there's uh, that also. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, so regarding this, first of all, I think my theory why it's not happening on Stride or one theory is that their window, downtime window, is much, much smaller than the Neutron one. I think well, Neutron it's 30K has... instead of 140K, right? It's 140K yeah, on so, Neutron. Yeah, so it's uh, quite a difference. Right? And it's slower mm -hmm. blocks, too. I don't know if that makes a huge difference, though. It's it's a bigger window because the blocks are fast on Neutron, so that's why. But yeah. Yeah, OK, so the. The slower blocks will just affect how often it ha it will happen. Yeah, but uh, being smaller windows, you just have to go through a smaller update of the state, right? So instead of thirty thousand yeah. blocks to update, you Neutron has to update one hundred forty thousand. So that's a big difference, and you can run out of memory while doing that, or I don't know what's happening, but clearly not ideal. Uh, so, but this could be a difference. The question that I have here, and I'm curious also what other people are thinking about this. So the fix means, at least for now, until the fix is in SDK 50, will be in SDK 50. Okay, so until we update interchange security to SDK 50, until 50 is released and we update interchange security to 50, 
we need to have a version of, S of interchange security that is on a fork of SDK. Because basically backporting this fix means having a fork of SDK, right? Yeah. There's also a question about where that fork lives. Uh, because it's exactly. Not, you know, obviously other chains are going to want to use it, not just Neutron. Um, but yeah, yeah, keep going. So, so basically now do we have consumer chains that are running a fork of SDK and we require a ICS version that runs on a fork of SDK. I would clearly not like to have the main version of interchain security, especially the one going on the hub, being on a fork of SDK. Because then the entire hub is on a fork of SDK. So we clearly don't want that. So what's the best way to deal with this? This is, this is the question. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be interesting. Um, bunch of version stuff, always a lot of fun. Um, but it isn't the fix in 47. So with the hub also, I mean, we're not even going to be having, uh, you know, until 47 on the hub wouldn't even be an option. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll have to discuss that internally. It's very boring, very, very boring stuff. Um, but it will be the, the main thing right now is I think it's uh, the Neutron team definitely feels they, 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 they strongly believe that this will fix the bug, uh, but uh, we, it'll be cool to see it in, in action and see if it's uh, if it really fixed it. Um, there's been another issue kind of similar, um, but a different issue, we believe. Uh, there's a state, there's been a state bloat issue on Stride, which we've been worried about the past few weeks. And um, the issue is that the Stride uh, database, you know, the, the, the disk space used by Stride seems to be growing very quickly uh, on validators. And um, we were working with the, with the Stride team, the Notional team um, over the past couple of weeks to look into that. And what it seems to be right now is, um, and, and maybe someone from Stride can update if there's been new findings, but what we kind of settled on was that it looks like it's due to this thing with uh, with a Huckleberry fix, <laughs> like eliminated some um, events that get get fired when there's a bad act. And so Hermes doesn't know when to stop trying to act for IVC. And so what's been happening is uh, that it's just been putting in all kinds of bogus acts and they just get rejected. The transactions are rejected, but they still kind of go into this database that holds, uh, what's it called? TX something DB, I forget the name. Um, but it kind of holds uh, extra transactions and, um, or, you know, transactions that haven't been processed or something. And so that, that's been what's been growing a lot. And we've kind of confirmed that by looking at the, the sizes uh, of different databases on the validators. Um, luckily that's pretty easy to prune. Um, and I think that the Hermes team is working on a fix to stop Hermes from um, kind of overacting so much. And uh, we, um, the, the thing is it really acts up with interchain security because interchange security has, you know, almost a packet per block. And so that's fine by itself. That's not a problem really. Um, but when you combine it with something like this, where this by itself, isn't that huge of a problem either, but you combine them together and you just get a very large volume of these failed acts, which you wouldn't if, with, if, if you only had, you know, each situation by itself. So, um, that's, that's the thinking right now. Um, and um, so hopefully we'll have a fix for, um, for Hermes soon. That database is also pretty easy to prune. I think there might've been some thinking that there's just also some application state that seems to be growing a little bit quicker than normal in Stride, but that's a much smaller part of it. Um, I don't know if you have any updates on that, Riley, or if that's still a concern at all. Uh, yeah, for the first issue you mentioned, here's the anti-handler fix. Um, just a decorator mm. removes redundant um, state created by redundant relaying. Cool. And then this, you, are, you, are you guys still looking into, does it still seem to you that the state is growing a little faster than you'd expect, or does it seem normal? Because it seemed like it might've been a little fast, but it also looked a lot like the growth that, you know, um, you know, we had seen on stride before before ICS? Um, I don't think it's growing faster than it was before okay. ICS, uh, controlling for the additional redundant packets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And it may also be that, you know, maybe getting this fix in that stores the downtime more efficiently also um, might reduce state growth a little bit. But yeah, so it seems to be under control. And uh, so that's that's good. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, um, good place. So wait, yeah, I think that's this decorator was already in IBC seven. I'm not sure. Because from the code that you send, it looks like it. It's just one line or two lines to code that the link that you send. It's pretty cool. Okay. So uh yeah, I think um that's pretty much it. Um I guess we should hand it off to Haifa, I suppose. Yep, I am here. Haifa's okay. Everyone's in. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a quick one. Um, the main thing is that we're still continuing to integrate tests related to the liquid staking module. Um, I think I mentioned this two weeks ago too, but essentially all the user flows are now verified on a local test net. Um, Dante is working on getting them written up and automated into our CI tests. Um, the other main thing is, uh, so V11 has been running <clears throat> excuse me, on the release testnet and the replicated security testnet since last week. Um, Dante is planning on upgrading from the release candidate to the actual version sometime tomorrow. It should be a non-coordinated upgrade. We'll just put a message for everyone to also migrate to the same version. And I think that's it for now. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I guess uh, if there's anybody uh, else who has any any questions about anything or, um, yeah. Denise, is there anything we can do to help with the process of hardening those tests? Um, I think Dante's got it under control, but I guess check in with him. He mentioned that the thing that took a long time was getting the interchain account set up. Um, and getting the tokenization tests working correctly, but I wasn't involved in. I've, I've been working with Alexa this week, so I don't know exactly what has been the sort of complexity there. Cool. Makes sense. Cool. Um, well, uh, if there's nothing else, um, then thanks everyone for coming. And um, yeah, thanks to all the contributors. And um, I guess we can uh, call it. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Jahar. Thanks. Bye now.